Right, drift velocity then. So if you look inside a wire uh, without any potential difference applied across it, then you will see the free electrons moving throughout the structure in random speeds, random directions. These random velocities are going to completely cancel out, so you won't actually end up with any motion at all overall for the electrons. So the electrons are actually going to have uh, zero velocity on average if you summed up the velocity of all of these electrons. Now if we do apply potential difference across this wire then these electrons are going to want to drift towards the positive end of the supply just because they've got a negative charge. Now there will be a very slow overall motion uh, a very slow overall movement towards this positive end of the supply and this is called the drift velocity of these electrons. Let's have a look at how we can calculate drift velocity. So let's have a look at our wire. Now our wire has got a certain number of electrons in it, free to move per cubic meter. It has an electron density. So this is only the electrons that are free to move. These are the conduction electrons. Uh, and we're gonna define the number of these per cubic meter of wire as a lowercase n. Now, these electrons are going to move through a volume of this wire. Uh, let's call that volume V with, uh, and of course the wire's got a cross-sectional area, uh, A. So these electrons are gonna move through this volume a distance of delta X. They're gonna change position on average by delta X, uh, which we can represent up here with delta X. Now let's go and have a quick look at the current equation that you should be familiar with. That is the change in charge divided by the change in time. Well, let's have a look at the charge flowing through this volume. So the charge flowing through this volume is just going to be the number of electrons that flow through it multiplied by the charge on an electron E. So the number of electrons is going to be given by uh, NV. That's the number of electrons per cubic meter multiplied by the volume. And we're going to multiply that by E, that is the charge on an electron, to get the total amount of charge moving through this section of wire. And if we want to work out the current, we just take that total charge and we divide it by time T. Now, there's a few things that we can do here. So firstly, I'm going to replace V, capital V. I'm going to replace the volume with how we would work out volume. That is the cross-sectional area multiplied by the length, or the cross-sectional area multiplied by delta X, so the amount of distance that it moves through. Now, let's look at it in more detail. Let's look a bit more closely. Well, have a look here. We have got delta X divided by delta T. Delta X is our change in position. Delta T is our change in time. Change in position divided by change in time is velocity. Okay, so we're just gonna replace that with velocity. And there we have it. We have, a, have what we call the transport equation uh, involving drift velocity. So it's the current. Um, and then we've got the number of electrons per cubic meter multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the wire, multiplied by the drift velocity of the electrons, that is the average overall motion of the electrons through the wire, multiplied by the charge on an electron. 